Oké, okay. ja, uh, even een message in Dutch voor uh, persoon aangesloten bij Zoom. Als jullie uh, vragen hebben uh, of opmerkingen, uh, maak uh, anders gebruik van de microfoon. Uh, nu zit hier ook Peter, die kan eens de chat in de gaten houden. Maar als je nog een antwoord wil geven of een vraag hebt, uh, aarzel niet om gewoon in te breken. Uh, Oké, okay. I'm going to uh, receive my lecture. Um, ja, dit is wat boring structures, uh, concepts. Ja, de more fundamental structures. Yeah. Now we can we have a look at uh, nice pictures. Uh, the practical network planning, and as I, I said, uh, said before, uh, I will especially focus on the Netherlands. It's because of my background. Um, ja, dan moet je het hier met bouwen. Ik kan zeggen dat het een zoning plan is. Dat is het gewoon een given the rules van how to do the plan. Maar als we het talking about uh, planning, uh, we could start on a higher level. Dit is een nice example at the national level in the Netherlands. Uh, and we call it a pure vision of the infrastructure and the space use. And that uh, looks at uh, Where would we like to be in the Netherlands in the year 2040? And that's on a very high level, this strategy. And it's also about land use planning, but not talking about yeah, what to do with certain parcel, but setting, could say, the policy. There's also a part of uh, land use planning. Uh, we can go down to the uh, province, uh, also uh, what we call structure fishing, also the strategy. Uh, document uh, about policy where it would be like to have uh, in the next 10 or 20 years yeah, uh, the urban areas. We have to build more. Uh, you know, maybe that, that uh, the whole idea is to, uh, to build one million homes in the next uh, 10 years. It's a huge. Uh, But it also means that government has to think about what would be green, where do we see the forest, where we going to have uh, new towns or extensions of existing towns. Again, this is not on the level of parcel, it's on the level of citizen, so on a high level. Um, of course, important in land, water. Again, yeah. Yeah, where are the areas that are uh, prone to flooding? Uh, we get more and more water in short times, uh, climate change. So we should uh, think about where can we see water, buffer the water works. Uh, if we have to cope with a lot of water, and we cannot pump it away uh, within the next 24 hours. Again, Not on the parcel level. But then it's interesting, and I have a presentation, but we are going to have a look, a deeper look uh, at uh, fission. That we see that there are things that we need influence left use. We also have influence in development, there are a lot. Of in Dutch, uh, and in Waterberg, it's amazing. So, The water resources area, uh, we don't allow developments that are in conflict with that uh, use. So that means that decisions are made on a policy level that will have influence on our land use. And on a provincial level, we are not going to allow, to allow uh, buildings, houses built in that kind of areas. We have selected. But again, it is not on the level between uh, the government and, and the individual uh, owner. It's on the level of policy. So you could say addresses the lower uh, governments. 
municipalities. Now, of course, also municipalities have ideas about the development, about the design costs. Um, and typically, an example of uh, urban planning where the roads, where do we have uh, offices, where green areas, etc. But again, it's not on a parcel level. Um, of course, when you uh, travel, uh, I don't know how I would call this in the university, but uh, if you travel from the railway station to uh, the university, you can see all the woods and photos around uh, the old railway station, new one. Uh, new buildings are coming in there. What is the foundation? No, the choices made in this uh, development plan in 2025 uh, with vision of uh, uh, by the municipality in 2013, and everyone agreed to that. We're going to do that. But this is a zone plan. The answer is no. Again, this woman stretches in that one. This is the idea what we want to reach in the year 2025. So, what we have to do is to go from vision to realization. We have something. That should be changed. Uh, we are removing all railroad tracks and we want uh, new developments, we want a park, etc. How are we going to do that? And there is important. Uh, ah, Chris, yes. Is there a yeah, 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 yeah. It was the original underlayment. It used to be like this. This is the west side of the railway station. So here was the railway line. And uh, what you can see also here is a temporary uh, facade. Because part of the, the new building is actually on where the uh, original railway line was. So when you sit here and enjoy your coffee, uh, this was a uh, uh, railway platform. And here was the railway. And the tunnel is in front of the old uh, railway station. Oof. Um, they moved it five years ago, but this, they started 20 years ago in preparations. And I think even before that, and there's also part of the vision to realization, it was that uh, yeah, the, the old buildings are, there are no pictures of the buildings that were uh, extended there. But uh, there was a lot of uh, yeah, old neglected. Uh, Houses that were purchased by the municipality long before. So before they started, I think 10 years before they started, uh, nearly everything was owned by the municipality. So they could start. Uh, again, then it was nice to make a link with the land administration. There you see the land administration is also a part of the land planning because if you want to realize a big project like this, you have to know who are the owners. And you have to buy it or expropriate it. Like it is also one of the uh, tasks of uh, land administration that gives the, uh, the government information about who has uh, who has ownership rights or are the other rights uh, on the land, and maybe also restrictions. So a very funny thing is that um, well, the whole uh, Structure is owned by uh, Royal Hill. Um, that is part of, of the national government. And in all the negotiations, uh, you would expect uh, we have one government, now we have several governments. So we have the national government, we have the co we have the municipality of Delft. The pro was actually only a very small plot over there, and they refused to sell it. 
because that gave them some power in the negotiations. And the, the, the new, this is an interesting development. Have you talked about that, uh, about 3D? Oh, okay, maybe at the end of, uh, I will show you. Uh, but uh, railway stations, combination of railway stations, and uh, building of the municipality. So one part is owned by Cobra, the other part is uh, above ground, is owned by the municipality. And to have, you could say that the government was not trusting each other. So uh, ProRail kept a very small plot until the last month. Okay, yeah, that, that's, I think, the first part, the practical part of the venture plan. Yeah? So you want to read something. Yeah. How are we going to read that? On one hand, we have this all the policy level, we have to run our deal from the plan, you could say, and we want to reach something uh, this side uh, idea. But how are we going to do that? Now, there you see the tool uh, making binding rules, and that is the zoning plan. And also called the land use plan, it doesn't matter. Development plan in Dutch, same as well. So that is about rules that are affecting Land ownership. Yeah. And then we come back to that uh, RRR and the middle R restrictions. You can put them in there. And so when we look at it, and uh, I think this will be true for all countries, so not only in the Netherlands, but all countries, but you see that in the land use plan, yeah, you put your long term objectives. And what do you want to reach? And that is decision made on the policy level. Then you search and you describe the strategies, how are you going to achieve them? And then we go about the down to tool now. This is called programs and projects. Uh, to implement and to reach it. And that's, that's where we see uh, the, the, the tool uh, setting the mind rules. And residential, commercial, industrial, uh, all the ideas. What is the landowner allowed to do? But what you see out there is, it will, is of course, all in, put in the format of a restriction. But actually, what you're doing with the restriction is to um, give an incentive to the landowner to realize this. I showed you that that uh, huge uh, step in, in the total increase at the moment. You have farmland, it's only seven uh, euro square meter. At the moment, you are allowed to build 700 uh, euro square meter. So you see the incentive. At the moment, the venture span changed from farming to housing, or maybe even high rises. Like Example I gave, that's in Ekenburg, that's really an incentive. If I'm the landowner, why should I keep going on farming when I can earn a lot of money? So it's an incentive to develop. So there, the land use plan, of course, when you look from, from a legal point of view, it is a set a bunch of restrictions, but actually, it is a set of incentives to. Reach that goal, goal of government. So the government wants to do something, or the landowner wants to do something. Uh, you already, before the break, you mentioned that uh, lobbying is not just the government standing alone, but there are also listening to the landowners. And they should also listen to the other citizens. And now I have a nice case where you see that the interests of the other citizens sometimes get neglected. They are not listening, they are not heard. They don't know anything, and at the moment they know anything, and someone's building is too late, so you cannot do something. So, what you should find. Now, the law is always like that, the balance, the specialist finds balance, at least I think. 
Arbitrage case where you will see the illustration that it is not always uh, as easy as it seems. Um, it's based on uh, paper several years ago. Uh, what she uh, made some distinction between three, yeah, she calls it right. It's a bit uh, uh, confusing because they are not the same. Words I use have other meaning than when we are looking at it from a vent perspective. And so when we are talking about rights, we are actually more talking about powers. And so not the right or ownership as such, but the power. Uh, one is the power, the other one is the develop is, uh, is land. Other thing is the planning authority. Yeah? The government is in charge. Uh, they are making the plans. Not the land owners as such, yeah. but government is uh, looking at the big picture. And then there are citizens, and you and me, neighbors, or maybe uh, living uh, uh, farther away, or maybe only visiting the kind of city. But then these, she says, uh, they should also have rights to participate in the planning process. So they call it, she calls it the use. Uh, of the city. And it refers, I uh, that going very far from that, because for the bigger picture, you also see uh, maybe a group about it, uh, right in the city, a concept from a uh, French uh, author. And uh, yeah, but it's about yeah, the rights the people have, uh, the power the people have, the citizens itself to influence uh, the development of the city. It is mostly aimed at uh, this, uh, this kind of examples. Eh? Uh, people who are fighting and uh, what, what uh, they see as that is then almost taking the power of the city. But where are the citizens? Eh? Right to the square, gentrification. Have you ever heard about gentrification? People with a lot of money coming in uh, an area and pushing out people uh, who live there. In cheap houses. The most funny uh, paper I've ever uh, read about the gentrification that was a test, how to can the test where gentrification is taking place. And uh, the answer they found was in uh, checking if there was in the uh, uh, subway in the neighborhood. The students were looking at the Google Earth and checking if subways were uh, coming in areas. They checked that with. Uh, yeah, or uh, 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 things like like the house pricing, uh, house prices are going up or not, and uh, they found in the relation. I'm not sure if I really believe uh, between this uh, the survey indicator and gentrification, but on the other hand, you will understand that the survey is not somewhere in a poor area. People are living without uh, money to spend. Okay, um, right to the city. Now, she's putting emphasis on the right of the citizens and the bigger decisions we make. And we go to place for more authors on land use planning. And once she, uh, again, we see the development rights, so the rights of the landowner, uh, the planning authority uh, can be that the, the government is uh, yeah, have no rights at all. On the other hand, it's the best it can be. It's also when you're going to read a paper by Agun uh, Di about land administration and uh, land use planning in relation to the land administration. You see that one of the things uh, why he's thinking about integrating land use planning into existing system of land administration or combining the, those two worlds is also because of this. Participation by the public, the need to provide information. That administration system is about the exchange of information. That in mind, we will read this uh, hour administration and those two co-workers are also in the room. 
uh, when you read in that paper, is not only about the technical issue. How are we going to put the information from the land use planning department into that administration? There's a bigger goal. It's about participation of the citizens. More information. It also means that you can check if the landowner is actually following the land use plan, or maybe the citizen building a bit higher. Of course, it has all that to do with power of the planners or the guests. Is it something that you guys can work like on the channel? Um, it's something that, of course, is very focused on Indonesia. And uh, participation is there itself very important because at the moment we have difficulties, uh, really problems with the arranged uh, land use plans. But in course, on uh, government is very real, but they what you can uh, observe is that the land use plan is now uh, just a piece of paper. And what actually is happening is, is something else. And it can be small or bigger. Uh, but when we're talking about this participation, that is also in the Netherlands, uh, this not always time. Uh, Let's say there are municipalities who focus more on the participation part than others. No. We, are going to, we have a general um, framework, but um, before the formal framework starts, uh, the, the, the municipality is drafting the land use plan. It's a formal, very formal procedure, but you can also uh, start before talking with citizens. But that's not really described in any legal format. Now, there is a format for participation, but it leaves a lot of space to the municipality what to do. So, again, also, uh, uh, your lobbying uh, question, uh, we return to that. And it's also about uh, how much space do we leave to, to the big uh, companies to, to lobby for that It's also good to know the reality and yeah, the authorities or institutions that are involved in special planning are in nearly all countries of the world totally disconnected from the authorities, institutions that are involved in land tenure or in cadastral or land registry and the theory says okay they do not together and the practice is that today they are really disconnected and what we would try to involve as our research is try to bring them together again and that is a possibility because we have the internet information infrastructure the land is and the space is binding us together and the case of Indonesia was interesting because there the developments are going Super rapid, and so their population increased to uh, now 280 billion. Uh, yeah, well, 50 years ago, it was maybe 100 billion, so incredible growth. And by involving citizens, yeah, because the plants are not only serving the public, but the plants are also protecting the citizens, and the neighbors are not doing crazy development. Uh, and to to bring them closer to the community, giving the, the online access and possibilities to, to influence and give feedback. Okay, that's in a, a good way. Yeah. yeah, so that's, that's important to focus on that dimension, I think. Yeah, there, are, there are two aspects, I think, in the paper. It's very technical, connecting with um, uh, the, 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 the LIDM. Yeah, so how can we reach that using the LIDM? On the other hand, I think there is a political agenda. And now I'm putting the words of Peter on, on uh, this one. Don't forget that actually there are two silos. And on one hand, we have land use planning. And on the other one, yeah, what, what I call the traditional uh, land registry draft information part. And we are inclined to focus very much on this part. And then it seems that it is ultimately, yeah, 
Uh, there's the same with letter administration. But in fact, the whole idea of letter administration is broader. So they're bringing all the information together. Maybe even more information, uh, also about the buildings itself. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's indeed the way you would approach this. Land use planning is about future. But again, you have to check that what you're doing this should not be just efficient. And we started with that. Eh? The, the land use planning is all parts of it's efficient. Okay, uh, can I reach it or not? It's a political aim. But on the other hand, we have those rules. And this is down to us. Something plan. It is, of course, about reaching the future that you have, but also about maintaining the whole idea. In fact, we are talking about uh, urban, mostly about urban areas, of course, and urban design. How can we avoid that we end up with a lot of brick? We want a good city. And this one of the tools we can use. And this, of course, very the, the legal point of view. And an architect will be more interested in this. It's efficient. Less in this, but on the other hand, you cannot separate them. We need those rules to reach that aim we have. It's efficient. And also to, to, to keep that fish, but uh, not suddenly the park or green area around the building suddenly becomes a uh, yeah, uh, parking space. Of course, the best practices are also with uh, my. Uh, I won't talk too much about it maybe tomorrow, uh, but uh, about if you don't maintain the rules, the rules leave a lot of space. That you enter if it's something that's completely different uh, than fishing. Also, over time, eh? because it's also uh, not about uh, yeah, what, what is the future. So, of course, the future is also about maintenance of the fish. Okay, but uh, now we're back to, to uh, what we really have to help on. Uh, yeah, what's called uh, all our buildings, Chinese wall. Uh, high rises, growing. The city, the people living behind it from the sea. Uh, low density, parking spaces, nice, of course, but those walls are fencing off wall like building. And is that healthy? Oh, uh, someone uh, wrote about it. Now, not only that you're feeling maybe depressed. What's happening around me? I'm living in a small house and I can see a small box around me, but also that Hong Kong is a uh, yeah, city of sea. But uh, the whole idea is that the, the, the air coming in and cooling, uh, natural cooling, is wrong. So people have, again, you can see, planning has something to do with sustainable development. And because uh, those buildings are wound, yeah, people have to uh, purchase an uh, AC. Not natural, not good for the sustainable development. Uh, we have to pay more for uh, electricity. Then we only pay, you know, we need maybe a new uh, power plant, etc. etc. Um, therefore, she has a look. What, what, what really happened over there? How could it happen? And what she observed is that on one hand, uh, the planning department, and the planning department had to work with a very old uh, law. The law actually was never adjusted uh, after 1939, so it's still from British times. We made small changes, but uh, the fundamentals were the same. Okay, that was the planning department. Now, from planning, those high rises. Yeah. 
how much and how high you can build was not in the hands of the planning authority, but uh, what's in the building ordinance. And there's all the department, the building department. And now something you see that the real intention. Now, of course, let our build and build as much as you can do. So we'll always go to the limits. While the influence of the citizens proved to be very limited. And uh, they could have some different planning planners for my not my rules of identity and uh, about the new build for uh, yeah, uh, now rel relative play. So what you see here is that the whole system of planning didn't work too well. Of course, that's the case of uh, Hong Kong, but we can make it uh, in a little bit higher level and we can see that, that we should find a balance between all the uh, interests involved. And there, uh, again, we see that the favor of Indrajit and uh, that led administration. So, providing the information, so providing transparency, but also in that way, supporting participation uh, will be important. So, that makes a connection between uh, the land use planning and, and uh, the whole idea of land administration. But now, uh, how does it work? And also think about the transparency. Now, this is the whole system. Uh, everything on paper, very tricky. You see that it was a land use plan made for the Uberg, one of the new developments of Lafayette, maybe you know that area. Um, it was the way they did it. It was so big. That uh, several pieces of paper, black and white, and also um, got to make our own choices in the uh, zoning. It's free wrong. Railway station. Oh, okay. Destination is railway station. What will we do? Now we just copy uh, the, the logo. Yes. There's also in that kind of old land use plans, you will also find that, that uh, where we started this, uh, please uh, don't uh, shoot a little bit on this building in kind of times of war sign. So, uh, cultural heritage and uh, protect the building. They've also used that. That all changed. We can now go to uh, our national portal. Uh, what about the plot? Yeah, we can type in uh, an address and uh, find the land use plan, which you see here. That, uh, actually, you can see where the house is. You will also observe one thing when you look at the plan. When you look from a uh, cadastral perspective, what is missing? Yeah, the parcels are not there. Uh, the parcels uh, you can select it as a cadastral map, you can select it as a base map, but uh, the base map itself is, is not, it's only for uh, um, orientation. The cadastral map is in the Netherlands, not part of the map. And sorry, the land use plan. That's also to do with the uh, connection between uh, the ownership and search and, and uh, the land use. So it's only used as a base map, and here I uh, could select it. But you can see here, this is uh, yeah, the beginning. And then you have to click on this, you find the rules. But it's a nice system, I think. Um, not working so all the time is very difficult as you will so you can see there are several land use plans and I think it's not land use plan but it is a uh, 
uh, you could say that in uh, perfect draw restriction, it's something you are not allowed to do. A bottle is now made that clear on it. It is not a part of the department, it's a big picture. And uh, this is an interesting one also because uh, here in the middle, you see two circles. You know what this is? No one living in New York. And you are too young to know about the whole discussion. And this is an ammunition depot. And what they're doing is a test. So it's an area that's made. Uh, Area around it. I think you can't find this one still on the portal. This is based, the is still based on old ventures uh, plan they made, so it's still in paper. Now, what you can do is, of course, uh, yeah, visit yourself and then the roof on board. I'm planning to the mill. So, from transparency uh, point of view, I think it's very good. Everyone is able to access this and no need to go to uh, the office and ask for the plan and pay or something. You can do this from uh, your own home. And uh, soon, if you're not sure about it, you have to do more an act, environmental planning act, the Dutch Omgevingsvet. And they're working on it for, uh, I think, for 10 years. And as far as we know now, it will be implemented. Uh, January 1st of 2023. And yeah, one hand is about the regulation, so we have one hand to do all uh, yeah, uh, land use uh, permits, etc. But on the other hand, this is what is more from the perspective of the uh, land administration. And what, what we research was combining those two silos in one system of land administration. So we know about the ownership. About the metrics plan, but in the Netherlands, they built a complete new system, digital cells from paper so the national portal, and there's one portal for information about uh, public law restrictions, but not only about the metrics plan, but also about other restrictions, uh, but also for the application of the permits, so it's in and out. And so, what they did was make a decision. Keep those two silos. So the Dutch went for this one. And so we have the whole land use planning, have their own information system disconnected from the cadaster. With one uh, exception uh, uh, until now, uh, that uh, the land use planning, so the zoning planning is in this silo, while well, information about or Public law restrictions is the monument is in this side. So the land risk. Now, other examples uh, I found this one on the internet. That you see on the holes, the scan. So it is a PDF, it is a scan from a paper document. And uh, now this one from uh, US and Washington and all our accessories. And here you see other information we don't get in the Netherlands. So it is a kind of combination of the land registry and uh, land use planning because I can see uh, who's the owner of uh, and that's something they always like in the US and tax records for the permit they check the neighbor pays the tax. So different approaches. They look a bit the same as the mind map or zoning, but on the other hand, yeah, the way they approach, uh, what kind of information they offer is different. So keep that in mind. Eh? So uh, I use the Netherlands as a starting point, but in other companies it can be uh, different. Okay, I put a lot of uh, focus on land use planning. Land use planning, but also uh, I 
for specific uh, protocol uh, restrictions. Um, yeah, uh, specific interest. In, yeah. That's what we know as want to do in 2023 is to abolish the difference between specific uh, protocol restrictions and what is from zoning. But for instance, yeah, heritage for the door type in the paper. Uh, that's also part of your uh, uh, exam material you find in the whole list. No need to uh, learn that by heart, of course, but to understand. And here I uh, combine the two. Uh, I'm search for uh, this uh, landing plan for the city hall hotel. But there's also all the information that you can see if you register in the cluster. I don't know if the cluster is in the letter street. And there's a reference. It's in the uh, piece of paper registered. Yes. And what about, and you can also find it in all register, a lot of registers, maybe in some of the wrong. In fact, you should have one register in the register. But it's a uh, yeah, long protected building. Uh, yeah, and then uh, that's for your assessment. That's an assignment for you. Tomorrow, uh, your task is to think about should we combine this? And should we go to the vision of the modern system of land administration? And ending those two silos. And maybe there are good reasons to do that because now basically the German has said we start with the prime that was the end of the prime. What we see is you know, land administration is about land use now, that's influenced by land use planning and all our other uh, policies. And land ownership, yeah. Of course, it's about uh, mainly about private law who is the owner who has a lease, uh, are the restrictive covenants or their uh, easement. But on the other hand, yeah, land ownership is influenced by those specific uh, public law restrictions. The city of Delft is a protected monument, so they cannot do uh, what they would like with the building. They cannot. Uh, Raise it down and uh, make a nice uh, new high rise uh, city hall. Not because it's a monument. And again, uh, as an influence of the land value, I can use it for uh, houses, then the land value will rise. Oh no, there is a public law restriction because. Uh, uh, pipeline running in my land, my land value goes down. So, all yeah. interconnected. Now, when I have a look at this, yeah, then Kristen is there, when the aim is to stay in the should we get rid of those silos? This was the theory. Tomorrow we'll have a small talk about what I expect you to do, and then you have to work on it yourself and then think about it. I will tell you, make it not too difficult, knowing that you have also all the subjects to study, but just an invitation to work on it and to think about your own vision, what we should do. And uh, you can disagree with me, uh, with uh, us, I would say, uh, don't be scared that there are two uh, co-authors of uh, working on Indonesia. So you can just say, we don't believe you, but explain why you don't believe us. Yeah? We are in Dubai, tomorrow, so we hope to be able to get our set. Our set? I think tomorrow is R, oh. then the week after it is Z, the week after it is See, okay. the week after it is there. So there was now a single group available for the yeah. last four weeks, but we have different groups. It's, it's correct. The yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So there's a very good example. Uh, 
don't believe your uh, teachers. Uh, like that, always check them, always read the material and think yourself. So I think that's the most important lesson of today. Yeah, you are now in the master uh, phase, so we can tell all this. Uh, bachelor students, we have to have um, always be critical. Okay, yeah. Tomorrow we also have a nice presentation of Abdullah Alatat, who will defend this. If he thinks it's on Friday, this Friday, it's about creating yeah, the manifestation system for Saudi Arabia. So, very different culture, and uh, yeah, nice to see yeah, what this. Uh, I think over there also the relationship to buildings, the rights of buildings, uh, shared rights, uh, private rights. Uh, so, be there tomorrow. I'm also looking forward to it. So. And if you have time, it's nice to go to a PV defense also Friday morning. If you have that easy. Nice to be there once in your life in a PV defense to see how that ceremony works.